I think it's great, though, that God, God lets us know that that's not the right way because everybody who lives that lifestyle, it's not fulfilling. It's not that great even. I mean, you think about what you can do to satisfy or to gratify your flesh. Drinking, drugs, fornication, adultery, whatever. I mean, all these things that could be appealing to the flesh. It's never what it's cracked up to be. In fact, it will, I would say, always just bring more hurt, more sorrow, more pain than any pleasure that it might bring you at all. These are just, God has inherent consequences with sin. There, there's just, it's just, you know, the drugs have a toll on your body. The alcohol has a toll on your body. It's going to destroy you. Whereas if you don't go down that sinful path, it's not going to be nearly as bad for you. It's better for you. And these things are just, are just part of life. And I think the fact that that is a part of our life should point people in the direction of maybe there's more to life and there is really an afterlife and that there's, you know, we don't, we, we shouldn't just have this, this mindset of let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. The Bible says in verse 33, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And I love this verse right here because he's, Basically telling the, the Corinthians here, you know, awake to righteousness, sin not. And then he says, some people don't have the knowledge of God. Shame on you. Shame on the believers when some people don't have the knowledge of God. Now, not everyone is going to receive Christ. Not everyone is going to receive God. But if they don't even have the knowledge of God, then shame on you. We ought to make sure that everybody has that knowledge that they have the choice. You can't force anyone to believe, but shame on us if, if there's people around us, if there's family, friends, anybody really in our vicinity that doesn't have the knowledge of God. We need to make sure they get the knowledge of God. And that's a shame on us if, if, if that's the case for anyone who, who doesn't have that knowledge. And that's why I said, I speak this to your shame. It's a shame. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves because we need to go out there and, and warn these people and let them know that there is a God, that we have a... a a living God that has risen again from the dead. Verse number 35, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. In that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. So now, he's answering an objection here. He says, well, then how are the dead, dead raised up? What body are they going to have? Meaning that when you bury a body in the ground, it decomposes. Right? So he said, well, well, then how can they even have a body? Right? I know there's only bones in the ground now. There's only skeletons. And even those will, will become brittle and turn to dust. So then what kind of body can it have? He says, you fool. Don't you understand how it works? I mean, don't you understand how just basic life works? And he brings up just a seed, right? When you, when you plant a seed in the ground, what comes up looks nothing, you know, it's, it doesn't look like that seed anymore. That seed dies, but then brings forth new life. And what comes up is that new life. And it's, uh, he says here, this is a body that, that hath pleased him, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him to every seed his own body. When we die and get buried in the ground, this is why I believe that, one of the reasons why I believe that burial is the Christian thing to do when somebody dies is because it's a representation of the resurrection. It's something that, that you're symbolizing a body being buried in the ground just like a seed is buried in the ground that brings forth that new life over time. So in time, when Jesus Christ comes back, our body is going to come back up out of the grave as a new life, as a new creature in a way, because our, our body is going to be changed and glorified. And it, it's, there's a lot of symbolism involved in the sowing of our bodies into the ground. And, I mean, you see that throughout Scripture from Abraham going on, 
and, and the importance of that burial. 